So I just listened to about six hours of the Skinwalker Ranch episodes, and I heard you guys say such nice things about me afterwards. This is Danny, by the way, that I'm leaving you a message. I've never done this, but I just wanted to let you know how awesome your show is. So uh, Jeremy and Jake and Wes and Kenzar, you guys absolutely, totally, without a doubt, rock. Thanks for such great work. And uh, I plan on keep listening as long as you guys keep putting the cool stuff out that you keep doing. So thanks for everything, and I can't wait for the next episode. Bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're a slacker. <clears throat> Harder slacker than Kenzar. I was going to say, and Jake was calling me the slacker. God. Right. No, you're both slackers. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was late because I was slacking. You were late because you got pulled over for speeding. And had to show some side boob to get out of the ticket. I know. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, man. They didn't have a female officer to pat me down, even though I requested one. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, yes. All right. Well, welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. Today, we're going to dive into part three of our communion coverage. Last time on communion, Whitley goes to a hypnotherapist, goes to sleep, tells him things that happened to himself, including getting punched in the gut with an alien penis over and over and over again, which eventually made his penis half hard. We're going to find out today whether he liked it or not. Welcome back to Infinite Rabbit Hole. Jeremy, always about those penises. <laughs> <laughs> always about those penises. All right. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole, everybody. I am your host, Jeremy. And today we are going to be covering communion. Again. For the third time. Not the last time, but the third time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go around the table, everybody. Jacob, I know Sup, you have dude? a shirt that you are dying to talk about. Yeah, man. Tell us. About I'm your shirt. wearing the world's okayest podcast shirt, as you can see here. Yeah. And thanks to Jeremy's quote last time we did communion, it is there's another shirt that's on the store, which it'll be a couple weeks. You know, it's been a couple weeks since with you guys hearing this, but um, it is the world famous most okayest podcast in the world. <laughs> so there's another shirt out there. But yeah, you can get this for whatever clothing option we have, uh, you know, coasters, stickers. I put a big one, like a good old like 9x9 nine nine on my laptop lid. So a lot of cool stuff you can get there over at our store. Nice. It's very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Moving on to somebody who was late today, but not as late as somebody else. Kid. Hello. Slacker. (laughs) You know what? Traffic sucked, okay? It's my story and I'm sticking to it. It happened. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. It's everybody else's fault, not mine. Exactly. (laughs) I work over an hour away from home, okay? Come on. That's right. Every everyone sucks around Kenzer. Yeah. (laughs) And last but not least, the latest of them all, and happy new year, Jeffrey Jeff. Jefferson. <clears throat> that is not my legal name, but hello. Yes. Hello. 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 So Happy wh- New Year. Happy wh- New Year to you. <laughs> Why were you late, man? What's going on? 
It's just got a lot of shit going on, bro. I haven't even yeah. eaten today. That's how much shit I've got going on. Damn. But we, yeah. not gonna yeah. lie, we were here. We we're like, yeah, he forgot about us. There's no doubt. No, I didn't forget. I just got a lot going on. So I am, I will slowly try to mentally get into this because at this exact moment, I am not mentally prepared, but I will be momentarily. Little known fact Jeff actually has to, uh, prep himself every time he does this to talk to us he hates us in case you guys didn't know that he does he despises being on here he tells us all the time after we get done recording he says i wish shadow band was this popular <laughs> yeah man i do actually shadow band is a much more popular popular or show than said infinite rabbit hole no it's not dude it's... yes it is no, it's not. And I haven't even posted it in a while, so my numbers have tanked, but he's so famous. Too uh, famous for us. He's uh he's hanging out with the small guys today. This is his uh community service. <laughs> yeah, he's way too famous for us. It's a tax but here he is. <laughs> I'm here for the tax write off. <clears throat> there it is. Exactly. All right. Uh you guys ready? You guys have yeah, anything man. to put out? Um, other than I listened to the latest episode today, and again about the mammoths, I just think that that's wild. The mammoths and the uh, the thylacine bringing back the thylacine. I think it's pretty cool. I gotta look into it more and see why they're doing yeah. it. I'm just curious. And the thylacine, they don't need to bring that back. That's already back. It's just been on my mind all day. But yeah, I'm ready. Let's 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 do this here. On that guys. note, meth. Uh, Shit. On that note, I fo- found a picture on Instagram of uh, the short-nosed bear, right? Ooh. The one that was yeah. part of the megafauna type thing. But it was so big. Like, there's people standing next to it, and this thing is like three times the size of them. It's probably like 20 feet tall or more. And I'm like, the Russians should bring that one back. <laughs> a godless killing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those people out of the national forest and stuff. No Bullshit. more missing 411s. <laughs> if, if we're going to talk about uh, cool stuff, why don't we talk about the uh, the Chinese balloon over our airspace? You guys hear about that? What? what yeah, there's it? a Chinese there's a spraying anthrax weather Psy-op. balloon. <laughs> it's a weather balloon, everybody. Psyop. It's, a, it's over Montana, or it was over Montana of all places, too. It's like, what are you going to see? It's a Psyop, dude. Well, it's I guess... not a Chinese spy balloon. That's complete baloney. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's really a UFO. There's nothing that they can see with a balloon that they can't already see with satellites if they have satellites, right? So, uh, why would they do that? And it's not, not stealth. So, uh, I, I, I get your argument, but they're not trying to see anything. They're trying to take like barometric pressure readings and uh, okay, and whatever. Like you can't that. do that with any <laughs> other method except flying a giant balloon across. You know, is is I don't know. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't know. Psyop. 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 We can all agree that it's just BS. Anyways, let's jump into part three of communion. If everyone is ready to roll. I am ready to roll. Ready to roll. Everybody else? Let's do this. All right, so this one's a quick one. So feel free to talk, everybody. Jeff, that that cloud that you just blew made you look like a ghost. (laughs) With your green screen. (laughs) He's a simulation. (laughs) All right, let's start it off. Pondering the truth. Immediately following the intense second hypnosis session, Whitley returned home. On his walk to his apartment, he found himself thinking deeply about the uncovered hidden memories that were broadcast out from his conscious, and he was terrified. Was he insane? And all of these quote-unquote memories were just figments of his delusional mind, or even worse. Yes. Was it all true? (laughs) And had it really been happening to him since he was 12? The warm feeling of his family sitting at the dinner table and eagerly waiting on his arrival to begin eating their evening meal did great for his short-term memory. The stress and anxiety that plagued the day faded away as the streamers enjoyed the company of each other after the long day, but soon he found himself alone once again. His wife and son had gone off to sleep for the night, and Whitley's mind quickly regressed back into his chaotic day. The overwhelming sense of being alone and vulnerable 
was too much, and he soon found himself in his office, sitting at his desk, behind a locked door. In order to stabilize his mind, he began to write down lists of all the possibilities of what all of this could possibly really be. Was this all part of the famous lore believed by many throughout history, known as the Fae? People have been discovering swarms of parallels between legends and modern abduction stories since the late 40s. Could modern terms, tools, and influences from all different forms of media cause modern humans to refer to the same events and experiences from up to thousands of years ago and refer to them now as aliens and memories of abductions? Could visitors from somewhere in our outer in outer space be actual proof that legends of fairies, elves, brownies, gnomes, changelings, pixies, will-o'-the-wisps, and banshees are not legend at all, but rather real things that humans have been suffering the terror of for millennia. Could they be us after we die? Could the Fordian topics of ghosts, spirits, and aliens really be a description of the exact same thing? Could we, the living, be a cocoon of sorts, only blossoming into our butterfly selves as beings from within deeper dimensions beyond space and time after our deaths? Could these quote-unquote beings be trying to communicate with their prior, prior species or selves? Or are we just witnessing them through brief windows connecting dimensions outside of our, tip, our typical dimensional view as they go along with their normal activities, barely paying attention to lower life forms that we are to them as we do with so many others every day? Are they projections of the mind, created in the physical realm by locked and forgotten powers of the human mind? Occasionally accessed and on accident from time to time with brief glimpses of the potential power access when we use more than our typical 15% brain capabilities that we are so used to. Or could they be humans? Maybe we are them. From another time. Ones that travel back in time for critical knowledge, disguised as gray extraterrestrials in order to prevent an extremely dangerous temporal paradox. What do you guys think? At first, I want to say, like, whatever he's smoking, I want some, but I don't want my guts to get mixed up by an alien wiener. Um, yeah. Did you, was this question literally, like, what are our thoughts on, like, Grays, Faye, so Spirits? I kind of like twisted this as a talking point. This is something that, that Whitley did go over in his book. He did go over these points. Uh, I kind of, you know, summarized it all uh, in my own way. Um, and added a little bit of flair to it all, but yeah, so he kind of goes over, he doesn't really give a solid answer as to what he thinks. He just goes over things that he thought that could possibly be the answer, but yeah, let's open it up to questions to you guys about what do you guys think alien abductions are? Do you believe that they're little men from outer space? Do you believe that they're interdimensionals, ultra dimensionals, the Fae? Do you think that they're just completely something different? It's a big question, man. I think um, I think there's a lot of nuance to that. I think it's a case by case basis. To be honest with you, I think there's probably a mixed. It's a mixed bag of what abductions are, right? I think you probably have black budget government and corporations. Uh, you know, like they're doing stuff, abducting people, right? And now they might right. be pre pretending to be aliens or not. Who knows? And for what agenda? Who knows? But that's a thing. And then you probably have some form of interdimensional or whatever, you know, that's happening. Call it the spiritual warfare thing. That could be a part of it. And then you also have the could be something from another world or in our world, like under the ground in the hollow earth or under the oceans or another planet. Who knows? I mean, that's a big question, dude. It's case by case. Hmm. I agree with uh, Jeff for the most part. But instead of something being from another place or, you know, the hollow earth or whatever, um, I mean, when I looked at, you know, the parallels between people that claim to have been abducted and people that go through sleep paralysis episodes, it's nearly the exact same thing. The same, you know, light patterns in their behind their eyelids. They have this feeling of floating. They feel displaced, you know, all sorts of stuff. And it's like... In some cases, that's not a, a parallel, but most cases, people that have sleep uh, or, you know, whatever, sleep paralysis, 
are the same sort of people that experience abductions from aliens. Um, and I would say that if it was a black budget psyop type thing, that the reason why they're pushing, they would say that they're aliens or convince people that it was the aliens is for one, it's impossible to, you know, bring up a class action lawsuit against an alien. because <laughs> You know, as far as we know, they've never actually been here. Um, at least to any degree where they're like, Hey, I'm an alien. What's up? Um, and, uh, also there seems to be a huge, tremendous push in, uh, the media and the government and all this sort of stuff to push in this idea of extraterrestrials. Maybe it's because it's easy to blame stuff on them. You know, if, uh, if a nuke goes down in Manhattan, yeah, if a nuke hits Manhattan, they could say, oh, it was an alien attack, and half the country would be like, oh my gosh, I knew it. I knew they were coming after us, you know? Well, you know, part of that whole thing, too, kind of ties into the Project Bluebeam, obviously, yeah. but it could just be to um, get the go-ahead, get the sign-off on putting weapons in space, even if sure. it's just for defense, you know? It might not even be to do anything. It could just be their excuse to say, oh, we need to put defensive weapons in space because there was an alien attack. Like it doesn't have to be the big project blue beam sure. ultra control thing that I mean, obviously like that's what I like to fantasize about because it's wild and shit, but it could just be as simple as, yo, we need to put some fucking space lasers up, you know, I'm down for space lasers. As long as they're <laughs> faced away from the earth. <laughs> that only target our <laughs> own countrymen. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like even hearing that seal, the one that killed, Bin Laden, I talked to you guys about the the super secret stealth helicopter and stuff. Mm -hmm. He's like, do you know that we have small arms, like small little missiles that can target just the driver of the vehicle? Everyone else will be safe. And these things explode above the car and shoot basically razor blades into that person's body. He's just like, it's incredible. Things that you'd never think were possible. So, I mean, if they're doing stuff like that and until hearing that I, I had no idea about it you know what's to say they haven't already put weapons into space or you know or have the ability to do that um and why i don't know nefarious purposes probably yeah honestly they don't they don't care about alien invasions they care about spying and having yeah. defense against other nations That's yeah pretty much they care about um, um but as far as whitley goes in my opinion, he's had trauma in his past, just like last episode. He's had trauma in his past, and his brain just has a very creative way of, you know, opening up and showing, you know, these memories and stuff. Um, I hope it's that, you know, it, it and it yeah. sounds awful for me to say that, but getting, you know, seduced by an alien doesn't sound fun either. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm... I'm with Jake on that one. Um, I think this guy's traumatized, but he's also a writer and he writes about this stuff. So I don't think it's nearly as extreme as we originally thought it could have been, but I think he's traumatized and he's tapping into something there. And then it's combining with the rest of his thought processes because that's just how his entire life has been oh we we talk about ghosts and aliens and this that and the other thing right so apocalyptic and world times well that's what else could this be right mm -hmm. jeff yeah Oh, you were leaning in, man. I thought you were thought you had something good to say. No, I'm sorry. I was just flipping oh. through a tab. I was looking at something. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move forward. We're already a third of the way through this. Dang. <laughs> all right. Next one. It is all real. It was then, while Whitley was at his desk, that he came to the conclusion that, yes, these things and his memories are, in fact, real. They were not just figments of a demented or broken mind and a sliver of another belief was simply impossible. He had experienced them all with all five senses at one point or another. His guests, Jacques and Annie, had witnessed the light from outside the cabin, and his wife, his son, and Annie all heard the loud bang, and all had described the sound of the bang caused by the small lightning bolt inches away from his face in a similar fashion in one way or another. After coming to the conclusion 
that he was, in fact, not a madman, Whitley began to dive deep into researching every little bit he could about these beings. Here is a brief summarized list of his findings laid out beginning on page 94 of Whitley's book, Communion. 1. He believes that accounts of UFOs noticeably ramped up or even truly began in the late 1940s, shortly after World War II. 2. Most documented stories are accounts are from as early as the 60s, and due to the time frames of the accounts and, and the taboos of the subject, many people held on to those experiences until the more free and open 60s, hence the hippie era. Three, many reports include experiences from the victi victim's childhood and continue sporadically throughout life. And four, it seems that these beings are very precise about how and when they reveal themselves to witnesses. Reasonings being, in the 40s and 50s, the general public began seeing these mysterious craft from afar. Reports hit newsstands and word of, world, word of flying saucers in our skies became a common com conversation point in the public. In the 70s, people began coming forward about abductions and sightings of alien beings. Then in the 80s, people began noticing and understanding that this is a permanent part of their lives. So... What do you guys think? Um, specifically on this, right? So there's a lot of talking points in this particular chapter that don't necessarily have to come from Whitley himself. Uh, more or less, what do you guys feel about the idea that UFOs and alien abductions started around the 1940s? And I did some interesting research with this and come to find out. That I mean, I don't know if it's just because that's when, you know, recorded history on these things started was in that time frame when people became interested in the things. But this is there was a definitely a big boom in the 60s. Right. And there was small specks of it in the 40s and 50s. But there was a lot of a uh, lot of people reporting it in the 60s of events that happened to them in the 40s and 50s including alien abductions and viewing these things. I got to push back on that because this phenomenon has been happening forever since humans have been recording history right, right. now. I think that the, the reason for the uptick since like the forties and the fifties is because the, of the psyop aspect of it. The, the governments want that information to be pushed. That's why they allow and, and leaked information to media organizations all throughout the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, you know, all the way up to now still currently, right. It's still happening. So it, it seems like they're opening the faucet a little bit more. Now it's not leak. You know, back then it would be them leaking information right now. It's like they'll partner with people that are like already well-known and famous, like Jeremy Corbell. Right. And they'll, it'll be like, or uh, Tom DeLong you know or like they just partner it's like a thing now you know it's like mm -hmm. we're making it a thing. i don't know but yeah it's just i have to push back because you know you can go back to ancient texts man the, the vamana the vamana is literally a story an ancient you know i think a hindu story or whatever it is about the battle in the sky with these these craft you know so isn't there Never mind. I'm not gonna say it. Oh yeah, Demi Lovato didn't Demi Lovato and Kesha start Both chasing them. UFOs? Yes. Um. So Kesha actually just came out with. Um, she's always talking about her UFO stuff. She's more into the ghosts and the paranormal aspects. She just came out with a documentary of her going across America doing that stuff. Demi Lovato is the one who's really into the aliens. She partnered with, uh, she was working with, what the hell is that guy's name? Steve. No, this start, I want to say it starts with a D, Dave or something, but the guy's really well known. Dave Navarro. He, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy's really well known within the alien community and she partnered up with him. They want, went on a whole bunch of little expeditions and whatnot. And now she always is claiming she'll look up at the sky and she'll see a cluster of lights. And she's like, oh, there's my alien friends. Hmm. She's psycho, if you ask me. But 
trying to see who that that is. Keep talking, guys. Keep talking. I also want to push back against this and bring up the first modern era uh, UFO story. And I I brought it up like a year ago in this show, maybe even more. It was was this guy named Kenneth Arnold, and it was from June 24th, 1947. He said that he saw, uh, like some describe it as a crescent moon shaped object in this circumstance i'm reading it's he saw a cluster of them but the phrase flying saucer was reported by the local news and then months afterwards hundreds of people said oh i saw a flying saucer when the original report had nothing to do with flying saucers and also uh you can see every major change in people's alien sightings with the way Hollywood works. You know, they bring out some character with big black googly eyes and stuff and everyone's like, oh my gosh, it was a gray alien with big black googly eyes. Yeah. And then Hollywood changes something else. They bring out like War of the Worlds type stuff. Oh my gosh, it was a it was a tripod you know, skate looking thing, right? It's just like all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Also, a lot of those pictures from you know, where people will come out with some, like, ancient alien type thing. It's, oh, it's a thing carved into a rock. Most of those, if you do any sort of digging on them, they go to some random Reddit page, and there's no more information on them. As a matter of fact, they'll even say, this was found by this, you know, archaeological agency over in this country, and those people get approached, and they're like, we never found this. There's no evidence of this whatsoever. So all these things are just ended up being, you know... Just smoke in the wind when you actually get down to it. So, and I'm not even saying that 100% certainty aliens are fake. I stick to what I always say. I find that to be credi- incredibly unlikely. And if there is, they're probably like some weird shaped cows on another planet. But, you know, there's there's that. We brought up the book last time of all the different types of aliens. You're, you're going to tell me that all these aliens have access to Earth. All of them, right? All of them, yes. Oh my gosh, right? And so it's just like, I think that people, by and large, I mean, we know this, are deceitful. They like to be famous. They like to, you know, lie and make a bunch of money off of it. Um, Some people are confused because they have, you know, maybe they're all wrapped up in this sort of stuff, and then they have some sleep paralysis, and they're like, I was abducted. You know, it's just like, there's too much falsehood in the whole thing for me to ever say yeah this is true Hmm. you know or this this could be possible because like from the very start it was a lie pushed by the media the local newspaper to try to add more pizzazz and flair to the story and call it a flying saucer and then all these people reported i saw the flying saucer when it was never a flying saucer to begin with it was a a cluster of crescent moon shaped things Good stuff. Um, Kid, kid, did you find his name? I did not find his name, but turns out she's Demi Lovato's got her own show called Unidentified, and it's all about her UFO experience. Just a quick little read up on this article I got here. She claims that. I had a pretty profound experience on my 28th birthday. I made alien contact and it was pretty mind blo- a pretty mind-blowing experience. And ever since then, I started to look into more and more and I wanted to do a show about it. So now she's got a show on Peacock and she made contact on her 28th birthday. Yes, and the, uh, the, the person that she does it with is Dr. Stephen Greer. And that is a huge name in ufology. That's one of the names that kept coming up there there was another one what the was the guy's name i'm gonna be honest with you i will never watch that show (laughs) just being honest with you yeah Um, and you know what to be honest with you i think stephen greer is a a shill i think he's a shill man i do you really really do i do i could see it i I think it's a show i think it's just theater he's just he was the first puppet that they could put out there and organize this whole thing to kind of get everybody to kind of lay it off, lay off a little bit on pushing for disclosure, you know, cause he's been doing this for a long time and because he he's been doing what he's been doing. I mean, really like how far along are we? Are we any further along now 
because of what he him and the disclosure project have done to be honest not no, that i know not, not really but i mean okay i could dude i could totally see dr steven greer being being a shill i, I used to love that shit too don't get me wrong yeah no I'm, no dude i mean you know in all respect to the guy i guess you know if i saw him i'd be like dude fan of yours but not, you know when i think about it i'm like dude i don't know man you know i don't I, know it'd I'd be like meeting an actor him. It'd be like I, meeting an actor. You don't I believe the role that they played was real, but right. it'd be cool like, to meet oh, one. Dude, fucking Captain Jack Sparrow, bro. What's up? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think meeting meeting uh, Doctor Greer would be more exciting. I would be more excited to meet him than an actor, to be honest with you. And I mean, obviously, you know, if he whether he is or isn't a shill, um, the guy <laughs> at one point started off legit, and that's something I do believe. I think that. That they just got to him. I think I, th- I could definitely see that there, Jeffrey, for sure. Um, all right. Anything else? And uh, for those that are uh, being like, "Wow, this is gonna be a short episode." Yes, it is. But we we're gonna talk some, some crap later. <laughs> we're gonna talk some crap later about some comments we got. You ready, Jeffrey? Yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> he's ready that's as ready as jeff gets he's like dude i'm so tired of these fucking people all right we got three more he returns soon after the second hypnosis session whitley his wife Anne, and their son returned to the cabin his wife knew very little about his experiences and thoughts on the matter and his son knew nothing whitley realized that by not telling them he could be putting them in harm's way while fully understanding the possibility of risk. Either way, the Strievers showed up at the cabin in remote upstate New York. They ate dinner and Whitley and Anne put their son to bed. Whitley's first steps into the room where it all began sent him into harsh and vivid remembrances of small beings, his nudeness, and the control that the first being had over his physical actions. He revisited the sounds of their footfall on the floor, the feelings of their little hands all over his body as they guided him to the front porch, and the sight of the foreign beings that he could never have even dreamed of witnessing in the flesh. Memories of his experiences flooded him with such intense detail, but everything came to a screeching halt when his memories reached her. So I'm going to go ahead and move right into the next one which is titled her he always describes her as a female but he constantly admits that he is very uncertain as to why he began to focus on aspects of her that made him think of the feminine was it the deep and comforting eyes the smooth and precise way she moved around was it her gentle touch when she laid her hand on his chest or was it the uncomfortable fact that being in her presence made him noticeably aroused. Her physical traits were so difficult to explain during the hypnosis sessions, but not now. The being that stood before him was more alien than he originally remembered. The only thing that she had in common with humans was that she had two arms, two legs, and a head. Other than that, she reminded him more of an insectoid than a humanoid. Patches of her sh- of her skin were infused with hardened <laughs> chitin-like exoskeleton, the slight jerks her body made between the smooth motions and her bulging, almost telescoping eyes, which held no pupils or iris at all, just too dark and never ending inky black pits for eyes. Although so foreign, there was a familiarity to her that he couldn't figure out. She admitted to him that she was old. But how old? She gave off a very ancient, very intelligent, very experienced demeanor. Did this play a role in his comfort level with her? Despite all of that, he couldn't get past the idea that she was incredibly aged. She wasn't old as in human terms. To us, she would be ancient. An age we couldn't fathom to hold a single lifetime. This, he somehow just knew. Hey everybody, bear with us while we take this quick break. All right, guys. Look, I mean, unfortunately, some people do are born hermaphrodites. Mm-hmm. 
and you can either have male-like features or female-like features and have both sets of sex organs. And then it's either the parents or the pe- individuals as they grow up to decide which one they're going to be, right? They're going to prefer. Mm-hmm. So if these beings are look, you know, are somehow built the same way as we are, you know, not the exoskeletons and stuff, but having two arms, two legs, and a head, then what's to say they can't experience the same thing too? So it could look female. It could walk and act and talk female um, and just have a big old hanger just slapping them around with it, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, there has been a lot of debates over what a, you know, final stage evolution being would be, right? So as we go through time, you know, if you believe in evolution, sure. Um, as you go through time and your species starts to evolve and everything they you know, uh, scientists have sat down, people have sat down. I've sat down with people, you know, on the ship or, uh, just in many different circles that I've been in throughout my life and had pretty much this exact same conversation. What would a pinnacle, pinnacle evolved being be light light that and and that that's what it ultimately comes to right is that it wouldn't necessarily be a physical body it would be a way for the mind or the soul or your being to exist outside of a physical body right because Mm -hmm. what is the what is the biggest restrictor on you in any way, shape, or form, it's your physical body, right? right? Um, you know, everything about it. But, you know, there's steps to that, right? And let's say, uh, what would the next step in human evolution look like, right? right? To get to one of these future time-traveling gray aliens that come back in time and take samples of what they used to be hundreds of thousands of years ago right one of the first steps that uh that they believe that is going to be something down our lines is that we're going to become either asexual or hermaphroditic or hermaphroditic yeah whatever right where we where we don't need to have the other gender um because that's just extra energy that we don't need but that wouldn't make sense though because according to evolution we started out as single celled organisms that could just split and create copies of ourselves why would we lose that and then gain it back in the in the in the future because clearly it wasn't needed dude i think i don't it would be more (laughs) of a technological evolution than anything i think what would happen is that in order for any species to traverse I was going to say space, but not even necessarily space, but just time in general, right? Because mm-hmm. at some point, like the sun will explode or some shit. So <laughs> yeah. in order for you to traverse time to that extent where you could evolve to that point, like this has got to be technologically based. So now you're going to be using like what we would think of gene editing and there could be like variations of that, right? The, again, I always think of science as we know it, but the, there's got to be an alternate path or multiple alternate paths of science that could have been explored or could be explored in in other parts of the universe, right? So we're very mechanical, nuts and bolts, electricity, all these types of things. There's other uh, beings out there that could be using frequency vibration stuff from the start, right? And evolving that way. And they might just have a way to edit their genome to not need to procreate with a male and a female, but rather to just, like you said, be asexual or something. Just yep. lay fucking eggs and they have hey, or something. I'm, I'm getting close to my uh, lifespan. Might as well just pop out 20 more kids real quick. They could be clones, too. Yeah, they could literally be clones of, you know, the... the exactly. That could be the future. You just, you have thousands and thousands of clones of yourself, and when you're ready to die you just transfer your consciousness into the next clone it would be the ultimate survival you know uh you could clone yourself biologically clone yourself Mm -hmm. and just transfer consciousness we're doing Uh, that now with very self-sufficient it would be organs now for rich people they are i mean they're building them with 3d printers now too (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so we're already right we're right there we're we're starting to open the door to see that kind of thing so give it 
yeah. I don't know, a million years, right? Yep. 10 million years. I mean, they're... next thing you know, we're going to be uploading our consciousness to the metaverse and living the rest of living forever. I can't wait to be dead for all of that. Oh, man. <laughs> that, there's your immortality right there. The metaverse. I don't want it. I'd rather be at home with Jesus. You guys can can live forever and, that sounds horrible <laughs> and see the universe me. explode. That sounds terrible to me. Dude. So oh, thank you. I was listening to Hush Hush the other day, and I'm I'm gonna give them full credit for this bit because I didn't I didn't notice I actually had to go look it up, but um there are a lot of cloning uh experiments going on, especially you know, black market stuff, like deep oh, underground yeah. cloning experiments going on. And they believe that, you know, they're gonna get to a point where you can literally get a clone of yourself so that if you need a kidney or you need a liver or a heart transplant or whatever, they can just cut it out of something that's like <laughs> super grown, you know, like, you know, something that takes like three or four years to fully grow. And they just, you know, keep it locked, locked in the cage. And that sounds like a Black Mirror thing. episode. Yeah, there's, I, there's shows and movies. Give them, three mon- give them three months. You'll have a new heart. It's fine. Right. Yeah, the, you're right. There is a movie about that, too. Gosh, what is that? The name I don't know. I can't think of the name, but I know I've seen at least one or two things about that. But yeah. again, you know, it's the same idea. Just you know, extrapolate because you're talking about what's the most advanced ev- evolution of this, right? So I actually, take that out ten million years. I actually watched a show recently on Amazon called Upload, and what they were doing is the person would die, they'd upload their consciousness to the metaverse, but on the side, they're also growing bodies for these people to put their consciousness back into a body and they can literally just recycle through bodies and live forever it's terrifying we should do a whole episode about transferring consciousness one day well that's a thing too right that gets into the spiritual warfare thing right where it's like the way that society is progressing and moving in this like weird uh materialistic you know, social acceptance type uh, progression that we're going like at some point, most people, if not already, most people would want to live forever. Right. Mm -hmm. But like what Jake just said, like Jake's like, I can't wait to go and not necessarily like you want to go, but like, if you go, you go like, you don't want to live forever because you got somewhere else to be, you know what I'm saying? And I feel that way too. So it's like, I don't want to live forever, but at some point everybody's going to be like, we got to live forever. So that we can, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, that's been, I mean, look at the makeup industry. That has been the thing is to look like you never age for forever, right? Since the, I don't know, the (laughs) thirties, you know, past, past the, the great depression when people couldn't afford anything. And then, you know, the big hype was, oh, look pretty for forever, you know, oh, Botox to fix your wrinkles. So you look young. The next step obviously is we have a way your body will die, but your your consciousness or your soul or whatever we want to call that will live on for infinity and you'll be in, let's say, the metaverse where you will have whatever you want. You will you could have a house on the beachfront, you know, all that sort of stuff. You could have no one else around you, everything like that, and people will just line up for it. You know, for sure. Yeah. I, um, I don't want to get... Actually, I heard a theory recently talking about the biblical mark of the beast and stuff and the Antichrist, where they said that this individual said that they believed that the mark of the beast will be some RNA or DNA altering type stuff where it will keep you from dying. And that's why in Revelation, there's, you know, these stinging swarms of insects that leave giant boils on people and they're running around screaming wishing for death but they never die or the scorching heat from the sun and they don't die from it it's because everyone that takes the mark is going to be injected with this dna altering stuff that won't allow them to die and it'll be going against the natural order of things and the way it's supposed to go and i was just like huh if i had heard that 15 years ago, I've been like, wow, that's insane. But right now, I'm like, mm, <laughs> you're probably onto something. Have we ever talked about the VMAT too? I don't know. The God gene? Uh-uh. We discussed it for a, a, a little bit. I, I well, remember we, 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 brief, we br- briefly touched it. It's kind of like what Jake's talking about, but apparently, and I don't know how, how true this is or not, but um, 
you know, apparently there's a gene connected to fundamental fundamentalism, right? Your fundamental beliefs and that that could be targeted so that then you couldn't hold a fundamental belief about anything, right? Whether that be your religious beliefs, your connections to God, or I mean, hmm. shit, I don't want to get into it too deep here, but you know, look at society. Does anybody believe anything about like fundamental shit anymore? Is, or is everybody just, I, I wonder if that's what, what <laughs> CJ was asking me about because I, I took the vaccine. I had a couple stipulations and they passed and I was just like, I waited six months and I took the vaccine. Lo and behold, it didn't do anything, but <laughs> we can take that out if you want. But, um, I like CJ approached me or like he messaged me and he said, I have a question for you since you're a Christian and you took the vaccine. I was like, yeah, what's up? And I expected it to be something like, uh, some moral objection or whatever. But he said, right. do you feel any less connected to God than you were before you took the vaccine? And I said, no. And he's like, do you feel like, you know, you're, you know, you've compromised that relationship at all or that it's just not as valuable to you? I was like, no, of course not. And he was just like, oh, okay, just curious. He probably stumbled across and he's probably listening, so he could tell yeah. me if I'm wrong, but he might have stumbled across some of the shit that I stumbled across where there are stories and videos and shit on the internet and they're probably gone now but we're, there was i remember one specifically there was a woman who was bawling and she was crying she was like I, you know i took the thing and then like i i don't feel that connection to god and this was like weeks later she's like i don't feel the connection anymore and like i can't get into praying and all this stuff and it was like wow now like she could be making it up i don't know but. i mean that's just self-guilt could be you know you be, listen to all the you people know, telling you that you listen there's a lot of you know, people out yeah. there that that are mentally ill in a lot of ways that you know so you take everything with a grain of salt but I'm just saying that that idea has been floating around and it kind of ties into what you're talking about with gene editing and fucking up the natural order of shit. And, you know, next yeah. thing you know, we're in the apocalypse. It's hard to say, you know, but we certainly do, you know, all these interesting conversations we have, it makes the stuff that seems more sci-fi seem way more likely than anything else. And it's it's truly interesting to be alive right now in this time period, um, because certainly there's incredible advances in science and technology that are going on that aren't sure. that don't seem to have some sort of nefarious background behind them or whatever it is. But then we're, there's all this crazy weird stuff that back in the 80s, it would have just been some crazy wild sci fi idea like, oh, my gosh, like the old Star Trek, uh, you know, shows where they had this, you know this device where they could see each other and they could talk to each other in a handheld device. And everyone's like, Oh my gosh, that's insane. Next thing you know, we have smartphones where we can, you know, FaceTime with each other. It's freaking wild, <laughs> you know, wick too. Yeah. It's, and what's even absolutely weirder, nuts. people think people will think it's mind blowing how quick technology has advanced and they're not even taking into account planned obsolescence, which means that the technology is actually advancing way faster than us as the consumer realize we're just being drip fed so that we can be milked for the money, right? You guys mm -hmm. know about planned obsolescence, right? It's they make the stuff not as good as they can so that you have to keep buying the better one. Mm, right? Yeah. There's a light bulb. That's why your phones like, only last two years. The light right. bulbs, light bulbs were specifically yeah, Jeff's yeah, on to something exactly. there. Yeah. Light yeah. bulbs used to last forever. And then they realize, well, then we're not going to make money off of this. So we have to have a uh, burnout time, you know? So they, mm -hmm. they specifically designed light bulbs to burn out after a specific amount of hours. Now we're here in 2023 okay. and you go to the store and they're like, this light bulb's even better because it'll last 20,000 hours. And you're like, oh shit, I'll get that one. All right. But they had the ability to do that in like the early 1900s. It's like <laughs> planned obsolescence. So yes, the technology is ramping up super quick but it's actually in the background going up even faster than that we just don't even realize it i think there's a fire station in like uh in new york where they have a vintage light bulb that's yep. been on continuously for like for 130 like years. years yeah yeah and they're just like it doesn't turn off it's a big old gnarly light bulb but it stays illuminated like indefinitely it's like we just it was, keep it on these days it's it it manufactured you know? before yeah and obsolescence sure so I just sent something to the chat, a link for you guys. Uh, it's, it's something to do with uh, COVID and the yeah, shortage. Yeah, I've seen going. that. It's uh, it's something, I, I don't know if you guys want to talk about this. This is definitely a good shadow ban topic. Um, 
but well, I don't we're know. definitely going to get a strike on YouTube. Oh yeah, um, I I've seen some stuff about this. I was um, who's I watching? I was watching a video about this. I forget who. Wish I could shout them out, but long story, sh- long story short, something. right? Is that basically egg yolk antibodies help? Uh, or they block the binding mechanics of. The antibodies block the binding of multiple SARS-CoV-2 spike protein variants to human ACE2. Right. So, you know, then now there's this huge conspiracy theory going around around now that the whole egg shortage is because they want you to get uh, sick. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, that was I'm like... I'm done uh, with this world. I'm uh, over it. Look, <laughs> I'm done. it was like... And then we see all these massive, like, the biggest producers of eggs and stuff like that, 2,000-plus chickens, and they just burn to the ground overnight. It's the same thing like what happened with the, quote-unquote, meat shortage. And then 25, you know, uh, 25, like, cattle farms and poultry farms and all this sort of stuff, they just burn to the ground and all the animals die in the span of, like, a couple weeks. And it's just like, oh, weird. All over the nation. All over the nation. Yeah. All over the place. Look at Jeff. Yeah. Jeff's like, we're heading over to Shadow Band after this. I just like, I'm, <laughs> I, I, it just, this kind of stuff, man, it's this like, this is your bread and butter, man. It doesn't shock me anymore that it's hap, like, that it's real. Like, most people would see something like this and they'd be like, they'd be shocked. They'd be like, what? I am shocked on the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm like, I fucking told you guys, <laughs> not specifically every little detail. Of course, I don't know everything, but like, you know what I'm saying? And it's not me. It's, it's all of us. Right. Yeah. But like, that's how we all feel in this community, right? This conspiracy community that the people who have been in this since back in the day, bro, I've been a conspiracy theorist since, I don't know, fucking 2007 or some shit or earlier. I don't know, <laughs> but way before it was cool. Now it's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, we're gonna have to definitely cut a chunk of this out on YouTube. No, we're not, dude. I post all these. It's fine, and this is <laughs> we're literally reading the the PubMed article, so it's fine. But that's it's just it blows my fucking mind. Yeah, how much those, shit for those that are. Uh, I, I just I just want to put the reference out there for anybody who wants to check it out. This is directly from PubMed.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. The National Library of Medicine. Okay, so this isn't something that we're just making up. This isn't, you know, conspiracy. Eggs uh, help prevent or help block the binding of SARS-CoV-2. Simple as that. That's what they found. Yep. I'll, uh, for anyone listening to this, there'll be a, this link will be in the description portion as well. Um. But no, I, I agree with Jeff. I'm also not, I'm shocked in the opposite way that there are people with all of the world's information on one device in your pocket that people use to make TikToks and memes with and, you know, read people's thoughts on social media. You could literally look up anything on this, right? Shoot, you could get into like WikiLinks if you really wanted to. Like, you could look up anything, and people choose to be ignorant. And it blows my mind the amount of people that won't even consider the opposite of what they they believe, and even like you know, like look into it and research it. Like, I looked into aliens, and I was like, all right, why don't I believe in aliens? Let's look into the sightings and the history and what happens when alien abductions happen and all that sort of stuff. And I concluded that it was ridiculous. And this goes for every topic too, by the way. But yeah, but there's just people that just get so sucked into whatever the man is saying, right? Whoever the man is in that circumstance, um, you know, the, the lead of the, the thing, but they don't question it. And they're just like, they see, a, you know, the chicken farm burned down for where all the eggs come from in north america and they're just like oh how unfortunate they don't read between the lines you know you know what it is man most people um are more comfortable with an an authority figure right yeah, they want because, comfort yeah most most people yeah. don't have the ability to take self-responsibility for things right and this is across the spectrum so most people 
don't right. have the ability to take self responsibility. So they would much rather be fed something, whether that's instruction or comfort or security, right? That people just want these things. It's, yeah. it's better for them. But yeah, that's that's why because it's easier to just trust the man, whatever the man is, yeah. and go with what the authority figure says rather than so question it. A lot along those lines, you know, just was a short year ago, if not less, we were getting all of these private farmers going to TikTok and mm -hmm. posting about how yeah. the government was sending them letters to burn their crops and that they were only going to uh, allow them to sell a certain amount. And they were sending them money for their yeah. entire crops. They were sending them the amount of money it would that they would typically more. earn. Yeah, or more uh, that they would typically earn from if they were able to sell their entire crops to just burn it. Yeah. And we were getting, I mean, just a flood of people saying, you guys get ready. Prices of food are going to go up and it, you guys are going to be in trouble, right? Yep. You guys are going to have issues with this. The, the prices are going to go through the fucking roof. Look so where, look where we here, are later here in BC. Interesting story. Actually here in BC, there was a man who was trying really, really, really hard to grow a saffron crop. Oh gosh. Yeah. A lot of money in that. He actually managed. He, it, it, he took, it took him years to make it happen. He actually made it happen in November. or like late year, November, uh, 21 type air is kind of area started getting a little cold but it's still fairly warm in bc so he could have made it happen and then out of nowhere we got flooded it destroyed his crops like same same day i read that article we got flooded out destroyed his crops that guy has nothing left he has to start from square one and my theory ties into that there was something going on out here and well, I mean, yeah, look, if it's if it's you can almost guarantee that if whatever someone made is going to draw um, money from the lead corporations that already produce that stuff or import that stuff or whatever it is like saffron is is very expensive. You know, a couple a couple little, you know, what, what, I don't the stamens is what's collected on the saffron, but a couple of those is like three bucks you know and you get this huge massive crop and stuff it's very very it it's a great way to make money if you can you know keep them alive but it's like the same same way with the two guys that uh, separately invented a hydrogen powered car and or a water powered car they put their stuff up on tiktok and they're like this is how it works and all that stuff and then both of them died the first guy he went out to dinner with some friends took a sip of his water and started choking and blood started coming out of his mouth and he died. And the second guy um, was murdered in one of these random attacks that's happened in the country. He just happened to be there, it was, right? It was the guy from Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like... It's a lot of those. It, it's anything... Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Anything <laughs> that someone can naturally. make. Think that Don't even get me naturally? started on Nikola Tesla, man. If anybody thinks that Nikola <laughs> Tesla did not die naturally. No. Now, I'm not saying that every single circumstance like this is someone being suicided. And unfortunately, crap happens, right? Bad things happen to, to people that don't expect it, you know, all sorts of stuff. But what I am saying is that if you start seeing these things, maybe use your phone that you usually use for social media and TikTok and do some research and find out what's the parallels, you know? There's no dopamine drip in that, bro. Yeah, There's I guess. No dopamine drip. There's no man. flashy that's the colors. Whole, that's the whole point. It's just all it's all about the dopamine drip, man. That's why it's hard for people to that's another reason why it's hard for people to take responsibility. Because when you do take responsibility for something, right? And when you complete a task, even whatever task it is, right? You just take responsibility, you complete a task. Yeah. You get a dopamine drip because you've completed a task. This is good, right? It's a reward. Yeah. But when you're flooding your brain with dopamine through social media and all these things all the time, constantly, when you go to do that task that you would normally get that drip from now it's nothing yeah so now you don't want to do the fucking task anymore and then after a while it's just like 
now you could become lazy and everything's a fucking mess no responsibility yeah right so it's all tied in mm. i agree we went down the rabbit hole hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah brother you ready to get i'm back so to hungry <laughs> yeah can we get back into it can i grab a plate of food while you do while you do this part yeah well i'm gonna be done in like literally 30 seconds you might as well wait okay do it and, and then i'm gonna we'll grab a plate food. and i'll eat right. while we can okay <laughs> while we talk crap <laughs> all right last last part uh, literally just five lines long. Uh, the real scary part. With all the details bombarding him and creating a new anxiety born from the detailed knowledge of what and how it all happened on those nights in October and December of 1985, one aspect of the story would devastate him on a level that these memories never could. That being the true story and uncovering of actual events in his life back in 1975, back when he was only 12 years old. All right. So anyway, back to this. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like 1975 is wrong. I, I gotta double check that in the book. Anyways, you should just put that in the last segment. I I should have. You're right. I should have just did it and then just did this because this is this is the good stuff, right? Commun- I mean, the communion communion's going okay. Uh, I I love the story of communion and everything, but this this episode ended up doing what the infinite rabbit hole supposed to do and going down a different tangent you know it's funny because i get so much crap from that from people that i know that listen to it they're like you guys are always going down these different rabbit holes and i was like infinite rabbit hole (laughs) 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 yes we do (laughs) you're right but that's you know i don't know just just to go back though on the farmers right because this is this was like go ahead jeff huh jeff go ahead and get your food oh yeah well, no, he probably wants to talk about this. I already know what you're going to say, so uh, I agree. Yeah, right. I, yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> Je- Jeff agrees. <laughs> but uh, the, the thing is, man, is that it was our one opportunity, right? Our one opportunity was staring us right in the face. We had a whole bunch of civilian farmers. My dad even told me, he like when he came to Virginia and he was hanging out with me for a week or whatnot, mm. and we, we got – we were talking about this topic and there's a couple guys that he works with that, you know, have their own farms or their family has their own farms and everything. And they were telling my dad in person that, right. yeah, we're getting these letters and we just got a shit ton of money uh, because they don't always sell their entire crop. Right. Then most of the times they do, but when they do, it's a really good thing. Yeah. Right. And they said, we got plenty of money. We got everything we needed and we were just told to burn it all just get rid of the crops and i mean there's there's a whole circle here there's a whole big circle here like one of the biggest crops to uh to get soybeans soybeans and corn corn was another one throughout the country that was really being targeted and now when you look into like the chicken feed and stuff Mm. uh i've also you know i hate to keep referencing tiktok right but if you want to go to some place where you're going to see uh, people that you're not familiar with in their lifestyle, let's say like farmers, right? And people who feed their chickens every single day yeah. and their eggs just, their, their, their chickens just stop laying eggs, right? And then they stop feeding them feed that they're buying, right? And they start giving them natural feed, something that they're making themselves and eggs start light, uh, coming out again. Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, that's like the eggs we got in boot camp. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the but the thing is, is like this isn't just one person, right? This is hundreds, if not thousands, of people on TikTok yeah. that are saying, "Stop feeding your chickens store bought feed." Simple as that. Stop. Yeah. Like, if you're having this problem, don't feed them the feed, and it's it's like okay. There it is. It's right in our face again. The first time the farmer said, hey, this is coming. We're burning all our crops because the government wants us to and they're paying us to do it. Yep. Now they're sitting there saying, don't feed your chickens shit feed that the government regulates because they're not going to lay eggs. Feed them the feed them the corn and the husks, you know, grind it all up yourself and give it to them. And they'll start laying eggs again. And sure enough, we have all these farmers on TikTok now that are that have stopped feeding their their chickens feed from like the you know here in Wisconsin would be Fleet Farm, right? 
and all of a sudden now they're laying eggs again. You know, as soon as that one guy that worked for the FDA got exposed, like top level guy, where he said that uh, we've been approving this, that, or the other because the companies pay us to, I lost my trust in the FDA. So, I mean, I've been eating freaking rare chickens for, you know, months now. And, I mean, despite a little bit of blood in my poo, I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, that's gross. How's that dinner, Jeff? <laughs> Bro, you have no idea. I was so hungry. Yeah, I had that last time. I like didn't eat all day because I was too busy at work. Came home, had to hop on the episode. I didn't eat until like 8 p.m. And it literally was 24 hours since I'd eaten. And I was just like, yeah. well, here I am. <laughs> it's been 27. Yeah, since the last time I ate. All right. I don't usually eat breakfast. Well, let's uh let's go ahead and start wrapping this up. We'll start talking some shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake, I want you to pull up the one that you had. Oh, sh- the wait, the YouTube uh, the... one? No, I got the YouTube one on Gateway Process Four. If you can get the 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 one on uh Flat Earth. Oh. You said... Yeah, you, you sent it to the group. Yeah, 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 that was on. Uh, that was on. Anchor. It was on. Uh, basically, at every episode, unless they, we change it, there's a question that says, "You did." Yeah, it's not there anymore. So you got to uh, find the screenshot from the from the chat. Oh, I can, sure, I can, I can look for it too. No, no, I got it. Um. Anyways, we'll get to the I don't first. Know why he comment. deleted it? Yeah, I, I I tried looking for it because I wanted to to get it up for the episode. I can't find it. Uh, all right, so on Gateway Process 4, we got a comment on our YouTube. Yes, we are back on YouTube. You can watch our smiling faces and Jeff. What's up, Jeff? Why don't we also put the video on Anchor? Oh, that's a good fucking question. I mean, we could be putting the videos up on Spotify, too. Huh? Okay, yeah, we'll do that, too. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it, chug of football. Anyways... Uh, Mr. Harkeel, H-A-R-K-E-I-L-L, you are the first victim of talking shit within the <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man. He says, bloody stupid podcast, nothing right. but conspiracy bullshit and contradictions. Space is real. <laughs> hey, fuck, hey, fuck face. What was his name? <laughs> fuck face uh 59 <laughs> not what anywhere close to that but yes that's what i heard fuck face 59 <laughs> hey fuck face 59 listen up i advertise myself as a conspiracy theorist so what you just said is fucking retarded okay oh man you should go to, you got to go to his page it is it's hilarious yeah, I don't care. I don't even have time for that shit. Yeah, I ain't it's, got time for that shit. It's pretty funny. It's like you I, seem you know like what I'm a certain type that'd be hateful. You literally just like what you did is you just walked into like, I don't know, a fucking NFL locker room. You walked up to some dude and you're like, you're a fucking idiot, dude. You're just a stupid football player. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a joke, but I can't. Fair we enough. Got, we got kids who watch this show. <laughs> Anyways. Congratulations, Mr. Harkeel. You. Had just you got to read our comments. our comments. Oh, back okay. All right. So I commented back on behalf of the infinite rabbit hole. I said, LOL, someone's salty. Don't uh, someone's salty that they don't have a great podcast. That's right. And then uh, IRH Jake came in and said, going to season this weekend's tri tip with all that salt. Mm-hmm. Nine out of 10 doctors agree that space is fake. So. <laughs> there you have it folks i don't know i don't know why he commented that on the gateway process thing like right. what the first occurred to me is that this guy has no idea what the document is that we're reading right he doesn't understand he jumped in on gateway four and was like what the fuck is all this shit yeah. no, no, no. because he clearly had listened to other episodes I was going to say, mm. oh, yeah, he's space. listening to other episode and he, he was listening to space. He listened to space is fake, decided to jump on our YouTube so he could actually put faces to the names and the voices. And then 
decided to brag on us because he doesn't have a leg to stand on and oh space is fake on gateway process four he hates the show so much that he listens to it obviously more than once and he'll probably mm. listen to it again and hear this so he'll probably comment again which will prove my my uh, my point here that he's <laughs> fucking retard <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so, second strike on YouTube. Um. <laughs> so I do want to play a game every time we do this. The game is. Is it digital or not? Oh, mm. <laughs> every time, every single time. This is, one, you know, Mr. Uh, Haleel. Secretly digital assassin. I looked at his videos. He has the potential to be a digital assassin. Someone that would make up a really cool nickname. Or like, you know, screen name, or a really know. boring person. I, I'm I got more respect for digital ass hat than than this guy. Like when I went to go see his videos on YouTube, I was like, wow, dude, this is a sad fucker. Like I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to to bust on anybody. Someone living his life, what a sad, sad sap of a person. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I I'm I'm not trying to to bag on anybody's lifestyle yeah right? i mean no no i'm yeah, not you are. i'm not Look, because he started, started this guy started Listen, he started he came on our thing and talked some shit this is what happens bro this yeah. is what happens this is what happens we got to go comment on all of his videos now personally i would love to take an air mattress and throw it in a lake and and use it like a raft that seemed pretty cool well, the thing is, we're, we're calling him out for this, but what this, what this is going to do is other people who want attention are now going to start talking shit on the comments, Good. so yes, we'll call them out, but that's just going to boost the algorithm so that we get more views, yeah. and yes. it's a oh, vicious yeah. cycle. Bad publicity is publicity, so there's, please, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Hate exactly. me in the comments. Please <laughs> hate me in the comments. Yeah, and, and, and we'll pick it apart, and we'll try to determine whether or not you are asshat or not. <laughs> I am going to I'm going to vote no. I'm going to vote no. I think I think there's a better option somewhere out there in the near future. Uh possibly that just hasn't commented yet. I think digital's coming back. I just I can't see him not do it. He just keeps updating his same review on my Apple reviews for my show. He doesn't he stop do updating new... ours. He just updates it every once in a while. He'll he'll type update and just add to the paragraph. <laughs> Dude, you should read it like a short story and use Mid Journey right. to make the <laughs> <laughs> illustrations for it. And it'd be like just a pair of butt cheeks wearing a hat. <laughs> hat right now, dude. Perfect child's book. God, all right. Um, all right. Jake. And the next one, I believe this was from uh, the Flat Earth Conversations Part One. And it yes. was the, the question that we had on it is pretty much the default. What did you think about this episode? And this person went in pretty hard. He didn't, you know, tell us that we were stupid. Um, but he said, Flat Earth is the most attacked conspiracy at is, as it is the most important. Flat Earth level, in parentheses, disproves the Big Bang and evolution theory. It's proof of creationism for anyone who has a brain. This is proof of God! Exclamation point. So, I'm not going to bag this guy. Because the guy, the guy honestly believes in something, right? He believes that flat Earth is is real, and if it ends up being true, it could be very important, right? It would change a lot of things. Sure, um, but I I'm going to disagree, nicely disagree with this person and say I don't believe it's the most important conspiracy theory. I just don't, and that's because the believability for it for me is pretty low. I'm, I think no go ahead. I'm going to agree with the commenter that this is the most important. Not mm. necessarily because whether or not the earth is flat, which I do agree with his point that if it is flat then obviously that's the most important thing ever because we just discovered what he's saying. But mm -hmm. aside from that, it's the most important because of if you really truly take the time to research flat earth in its entirety the proper model and you really do the digging you learn so many other conspiracies you find so many other connections and dots and who's what's and all these things mm. that if you started with that you would come out of it even if you didn't think the earth was flat you would come out of it a conspiracy theorist because you would know all these other things that were true and you could confirm it's if a, that makes sense it's a gateway drug it's a gateway <sighs> drug it really it really can be 
it's kind of like 9-11 in a way, right? Mm -hmm. 9-11 is another one. And most people, a lot of people would say that's the most important because of the same thing, because it's a gateway. You learn so many things that you're like, wait a second, we are not living in the reality that we're told. <laughs> so that was my first thought, actually. My mind went, it immediately went to 9-11. That is one of the more important conspiracy theories. So uh, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to take a middle stance here. I don't agree, but I don't disagree flat earth is is a really big one yes but so is 9-11 they do the same thing so that's where i'm gonna sit with this one i'm in i'm waffling i'm going to disagree with this commenter because i believe in god i have a relationship with god but when it comes down to the most important things there's plenty of ways to disprove evolution but disproving evolution or proving evolution or uh, proving that the earth is flat or proving that the earth is a globe doesn't keep people from, you know, in my belief system, if you're not saved by the blood of Christ, you're going to spend forever separated from God, however horrible that might be. So in my personal viewpoint, that information is not the most important thing. You spend your whole life trying to, and maybe someone does, they should prove the earth is flat. Great. I've heard plenty of people that are Christians say that it, the Bible talks about the earth being flat. Fantastic. Knowledge of that won't keep you out of hell. So I don't find it to be the most important thing. Now, Agreed. that being said, if this guy took the time to reach out to us and clearly he's on the opposing viewpoint as most of us were, you know, Jeff and uh, I think we had declassified Dave on that one. Yeah. Um, you know, and then the rest of us are like, eh, you know, whatever, one way or the other. But Jeremy, you were asking for someone who yeah. believed in flat earth to come on the show mm -hmm. and it would be cool if we could, you know, maybe he'll comment on this one. Um, you know, if you're listening to this, Jeff hit us up. I think it's Jeff G E O F F. Right. Yes. Yep. So yeah, Jeff, if you're listening to this, um, shoot us a, uh, a a DM on our group Facebook page if you want to come on and and discuss your opinion because clearly you have interest here. You have Jeff that's agreeing with you. Kenzar is is half and half. Jeremy's disagreeing, and I'm just saying, well, it's really unimportant to the grand scheme scheme of things. But in any case, we would love to have you on here to hear you out why you believe this and and you know what you feel are the evidences of it and stuff and first and foremost you'll have jeff here to probably back you up in most of these cases so i mean yeah that would be really cool i think that there's one mistake that the religious community makes when it comes to this type of thing and that's to assume and, and i'm not gonna say everybody but it just seems like generally this is what i get you know, that argument that if we can prove the Big Bang was fake, that creation story is real. But I don't see how they can't be the same. I don't see how the Big Bang couldn't be an act of God. That is the creation story, if that makes sense. Right yeah. now, obviously, like, I don't know. It's just weird to me that 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 connection doesn't seem to be made as much in the religious community. No, I know? feel you. Everything came from nothing. Suddenly, <clears throat> um, it wasn't it's a miracle in development. It was a miracle. You know, right. the Bible says that, um, you know, that the God spake it into existence. Uh, the voice of God is supposed to sound like booming thunder to people that don't know what it is. Right. Um, it's, you can't even comprehend it. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> the scientists could have just backed their way in the Bible with this whole big bang theory and saying, yeah, everything wasn't. And then everything was right. Exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, I feel that, but when it gets into the evolution portion, I'm just like, ah, eh, you lost me. Yeah, but, but you there's know. no reason to, to uh, that's another part of it. I don't see why the connection can't be made that evolution wasn't part of God's design, right? Like, why couldn't God have snapped the Big Bang into existence with all of the universe and time and also created this evolutionary mechanism for us to get to the point to where we can do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't sure. see how that couldn't still be part of this grand miracle. You know, I mean, I listened to uh, Dr. Frank Turek and he does college Q&A. He debates, you know, atheists and stuff. And he he said 
straight up. He's like, look, even if evolution was true, he's like, even if we all took a really long time to get to where we are now, it doesn't take anything away from Jesus and the right. things he said. That's he's what like, I'm so saying. honestly, it's not even that, an argument, you know? That concept right there, like you could bridge the gap between atheists and religious people, right? Like there, there is that gap and there is these debates all the time. And it's almost like this resentment between the two groups in a way. And right, you could bridge that to a certain extent if that realization was just more broad. Like, hey, dude, all of this could be the miracle, right? Like it doesn't have right. to be one or the other. Both things could be true at the same time. Fair enough. Yeah, Jeff, come on up. Come hit us up. We'd love to have you on. Absolutely love it. My cat's fucking with my green screen. <laughs> Good stuff, everybody. Um, all right. Well, I don't know how long it's going to be until you get part four. We're going to try not to just dump a whole bunch of the same topic on you guys all at once. So, I don't know. Maybe another month or two until... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say shoot for another month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, and hopefully we can uh, get something different out to you next week don't know what it is yet maybe maybe it's uh, uh the next part of uh the gateway process i don't know that's what i want it to be just because you know i'm i'm into it right now um but we do need to make sure that we throw in some other shit in there too and oh and just for the listeners don't expect the trolls episode anytime soon i just lost my motivation for it but coming up you'll probably hear a really cool story about the uh, losing and finding of a uh, a cryptid and how it all went together and, you know, get a cool story out of it. Right on. Right on. Well, anybody else have anything else? No, sir. All right. Well, if you are watching on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button. Let us know. Leave us a comment, even if it's stupid. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Yeah. That has been another episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole Podcast, everybody. We will see you next time on the next path of the infinite rabbit hole. Bye. 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 Bye.